Hi there, and welcome to PhD at Living. Last time we talked about the chemistry of glues, and that's great, but any idiot with a keyboard can find SDSs online, right? Today we're going to do the hard work of explaining how adhesion works and why adhesives are, well, adhesive. Let's start first by talking about how adhesion works physically, that is, how do you bond two surfaces together? Which brings us to our first caveat. There is no one right definitive answer. There are at least five different mechanisms for adhesion, but the main one is mechanical in nature. What we mean there is the glue is filling in some physical cracks in your one surface and some other physical cracks in the other one, and then the cohesive chemical bonding between the glue itself is what's holding those two pieces together. Your glue is essentially Spider-Man just holding those two halves of the fairy together. The nice part here is of all of those adhesion mechanisms, mechanical bonding probably explains like 95% of what your glues are doing at home. On the chemistry side, you can definitely get bona fide chemical bonds forming between your substrate and your adhesive, and that's what causes the bond to form. That said, this one almost always takes a backseat to the purely physical mechanical mechanism we just talked about. Think of it this way. How often are you dealing with a chemically reactive substrate? And even more than that, how often is the non-chemist general consumer going to be relied upon to know the relevant chemistries involved and make the best decision on what adhesive to use? I think not. Much, much less common than physical or chemical adhesion are van der Waals adhesion, electrostatic adhesion, and diffusion adhesion. Van der Waals adhesion requires dipoles or London dispersion-induced dipoles to cause attractiveness between molecules. Electrostatic adhesion requires conductive materials passing charges between them. And diffusion adhesion requires chemically motive materials to go between the substrate and the adhesive, causing that attractiveness. Again, think how often any of those conditions is going to apply. Enough said on that one. Which brings us to the real meat and potatoes of today's video, the much, much more interesting question of why adhesives are adhesive. Why are some things sticky and other things aren't? What chemically gives those things the strength, stiffness, longevity, etc. to perform their functions? Now things are going to get really, really messy. Let's start first by saying there's no grand unifying theory on adhesion, nothing that adequately explains it in sufficient simplicity to say, there it is, that's what makes something sticky. With that caveat, Let's talk about the heavy hitters. Surface energy! I've watched a handful of videos and read a bunch of articles on surface energy, but it's still a somewhat nebulous concept to me. By definition, surface energy is the work required to increase the area of a surface by one unit. Surface tension is the equivalent property in liquids, so when we're talking about solid substrates and liquid adhesives, you can think of the surface energies and surface tensions there interchangeably. But that doesn't really tell you much about adhesive predictability based on molecular formula. What we want is to look at the chemical structure of a given compound and know whether it will adhere to a given substrate or not. After hours on the internet and thinking about this, I have surprisingly very little. Here's what we know for sure though. 1. Higher surface energy substrates are easier to adhere to than lower surface energy substrates. And 2. Having more atoms or molecules at the surface of a material increases surface energy. And three, well, that's about it. You basically have to deduce everything else from empirical data. Metals, for instance, tend to have relatively high surface energy, and polyethylene and polytetrafluoroethylene, for instance, have relatively low surface energy. Okay, so what are the differences there? Most metals tend to be transition elements, so we're talking about more valence electrons and more electrons in general. The higher atomic numbers of metals compared to the organic elements means a higher effective nuclear charge, Z star, so your inner electrons are pulled more tightly to the nucleus, and your outer valence electrons are shielded from that, meaning they're more chemically labile. In contrast, something like HDPE only has carbons and hydrogens, and those bonds are about as nonpolar as covalent bonds between two dissimilar elements can be. In addition, we have relatively few electrons in total, so it sort of stands to reason that that would be less reactive. Think about it this way. Most metals have an oxide passivation layer on the outside, so bare metals are pretty reactive at ambient conditions by default. Okay, that's one angle. Let's look at another. Roughness. Metals tend to arrange in highly organized networks, but there isn't a super high need for long-range defined symmetry as long as the unit cells are happy and the electrons can resonate around that highly organized metal covalent network. The atoms of metals also tend to be slightly physically larger than those of the smaller atomic number, let's say carbon-hydrogen sort of elements, so there is some increased, albeit very small, we're talking angstroms here, roughness. 
The extremely low surface energy materials tend to be highly symmetric polymers. Polyethylene, PE, polypropylene, PP, and polytetrafluoroethylene, PTFE or Teflon, are all olefin-based polymers that make extremely highly symmetric chains. That high symmetry leads to a high degree of uniformity and typically not so much branching either. In addition, electronically, the atoms in these polymers are pretty happy where they are and nobody cares to make a dipole with anybody else. These materials tend to be highly unreactive. Think about the way HDPE is a container for, well, almost anything, and PTFE is a non-stick coating designed not to react or stick to anything. This is all sort of making sense. Let's talk this out by way of example. We know more surface area and surface roughness means more molecules at the surface of a material, so surface energy is higher by default, and we know that the physical and the chemical work in concert here. What we're getting at is for a material with high surface energy such as aluminum, a rough physical surface is great. Where we're not 100% sure is whether a smooth high surface energy material like this aluminum has better bonding potential than a rough low surface energy material like this PTFE. What we do know for sure though is high surface roughness, high surface energy like this aluminum, very good for bonding, and very smooth low surface energy surface like this PTFE over here, not so good for adhesion. Coupled with surface energy is wettability, that is the adhesive's ability to make a nice smooth film on your substrate. If you have a good surface energy match between your substrate and your adhesive, the adhesive will make a good smooth film and provide a lot of good area for bonding. Good. Bad surface energy match between your substrate and your adhesive, and the adhesive will basically just beat up like water on a waxy surface and not give you a lot of good area for bonding. That's bad. Wettability can be measured with contact angle experiments, meaning the angle on which the adhesive rests on the substrate is measured. Very low contact angle, not so good. Very large contact angle, very good. There's more that goes into it than that, but it's beyond the scope of our discussion. Another important parameter in adhesion is, well, cohesion. You can have excellent surface energy matches between your substrate and your adhesive, but if the adhesive breaks in itself as soon as you apply stress to it, it doesn't really get you anywhere, does it? For that reason, you have to make sure that there is good cohesion between the molecules of the glue itself, irrespective of what's going on with the substrate. For most adhesives, this is pretty easy to achieve anyway, but it's still worth mentioning. Finally, we get to viscosity. I know it's a physical consideration in a chemical video, but it's important. Because your adhesive starts as a liquid, you have to make sure it's inviscid enough to fill in all the wonderful surface area increasing, bond adhesion increasing nooks and crannies in your substrate. If your glue is too thick, it won't fill in all that surface area and you'll be losing out on bonding potential. On the other hand, if it's too thin and you have it at an angle, let's say, then you might pour your adhesive right here and then it just pools off before it dries or cures. On the other, other hand, if it's too thick, it might never fill in those voids and cracks in the first place. It's hard to determine exactly what viscosity you need given you don't know the specifics of a situation, but again, this is still an important parameter. It will not surprise you to know that the viscosity required for a given scenario is scenario dependent, so I can't really give you an optimum viscosity for every adhesive. To round out our discussion, here's what we know good adhesives have to have. Lower surface energy than their substrates to require good wetting. Good cohesive abilities between the molecules within the adhesive. And good viscosity, whatever that means. As an example to drive all this home, let's talk about our friend the post-it note. The sticky stuff on the back of these guys is a Goldilocks. It needs to stick just enough to adhere, but not so much that it takes a piece of the substrate away when it's removed, the dreaded peel the paint off the wall tape. The adhesive in post-it notes is called a pressure sensitive adhesive. There are no chemical reactions happening here. Rather, the post-it note optimizes surface energy, surface tension, wettability, cohesion, and viscosity to adhere just enough to its substrate to stay where it is, but then when removed, doesn't take a piece of the substrate with it. Pretty cool, huh? In summary, the chemistry of an adhesive is very important and instructs on the parameters that follow, but the main things we're concerned about with an adhesive are surface energy slash surface tension, which lead to a determination of wettability for a given adhesive on a given substrate, cohesion within the adhesive itself, and viscosity of the uncured adhesive for workability. And there you have it folks, a two-part riveting discussion about the chemistries of household glues and why they work the way they work. See y'all next time. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. <laughs>